With the permission of my attorney, I can finally talk about why one of our private lenders turned us into the FBI. Let's dive right in. I don't really know like how to get into something like this. So I figure I'm just gonna walk you guys through the facts of what happened, what the response was. Um, this is on a flip that literally just closed, hence why I'm now allowed to do this video on it. On the property, we ended up making right around $31,000 gross. After it was all said and done, we netted about 20K. Um, but I'm gonna walk you guys through how we found the deal, how we found the lender, and what transpired to make them think that a crime uh, worthy of wasting federal investigators' time uh, transpired. If you guys haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe. We always try to show you guys um, the good and the bad with real estate. I feel like often real estate investors, influencers, tend to do the whole like, we did this deal with private money and they fail to mention those private lenders are people. Um, people have different desires, different goals, different fears, different hangups. Um, and uh, that's probably gonna come to play a little bit in this particular video. So on this particular deal, um, they're on a niche list we got from County. They got a piece of ballpoint mail. They then went to our Carrot website, Call Border took the call, entered all of the details into Resimply, who booked the appointment for our staff and we ended up getting this particular property under contract. Now, it ended up being actually a pretty substantial remodel. We bought the place for 75,000 bucks and it needed 55K in work. Um, I would typically way rather buy a place for, you know, 100 and put 10 or 15 into it than having kind of the purchase to remodel being equal. This was also kind of a smaller place, but it was one of those like, everything needed to be touched. Um, we'll throw up some before and afters for you guys kind of just as I go through the video to keep it visually interesting for you. So on this particular deal, um, we wanted to test a new money lender. Um, somebody just like you, they've seen my videos, they've maybe interacted with me on Instagram and they realized there's the possibility to get involved in deals that we're doing. And this particular gentleman hit me up, um, was a real estate investor himself and said, I've got some cash I'm looking to place. Do you have any opportunities that make sense? Now I've done a whole other video on like how we do private money lending, how to stay safe if you're a lender and all that, that I'll link to above if you're watching this on YouTube. But we send them just kind of to start a lending packet, shows them what the collateral is and uh, kind of what the return is that we're offering. We'll throw that up for you on screen as well. So you can see kind of the actual deal um, that we did that we're talking about here. So this particular lender said, hey, that looks good. Um, I think I'm ready to move forward. You know, please introduce me to title and all that. So we introduced them to our title company, uh, which has done hundreds of deals for me at this point. Um, that's important, that's why I emphasize that. And kind of line up, hey, here's closing, here's what the plan is. Now with our private lenders, particularly people I don't know, we always ask them to wire in the business day prior to close. So this particular deal was supposed to close on a Monday, meaning, hey, Mr. Private Lender, we need your money there on Friday. So wiring instructions go to the lender. We always have those lenders call the title company just by Googling the phone number, not what was sent in that same email or anything, saying, hey, I have wiring instructions from you. I just wanna make sure these are legit. That checked out, guy sent his money over on Friday. Now, like I mentioned, this particular deal wasn't supposed to close until Monday. Um, now, this is kind of where like the what happened bit starts. So our title company has grown a lot. I don't own them, I'm just one of their larger clients. And they didn't send the lender a confirmation that said, hey, we got your wire, right? Um, a lot of our guys don't even ask for that, don't even expect it, but this particular guy, it was something he wanted. He asked for it, they hadn't sent it over. So on Friday, Title also discovered there were three siblings that were selling this particular house to us. One of them had a judgment out from like, I forget who it was, Capital One, Bank of America, something credit card related that we needed to get cleared in order to close the place. Um, so we found kind of that out on Friday. He didn't get his wire confirmation. And second, um, there was kind of this last issue that needed sorting. Now, if you've done any deals, like you know stuff comes up all the time, especially on a probate type property that was inherited with multiple heirs, right? 
So fast forward to Monday and my email inbox just starts blowing up. Um, hey, I haven't heard from Title that they got my wire. I think it was a span of like 14 minutes. I got four or five emails uh, from this particular gentleman. And I called Title and said, hey, I need you to send this guy a wire. Um, you know, he's pretty concerned. I don't think he's done a lot of private lending before. He's worried that his money is just like gone, right? So Title assures me, yeah, we'll get that flicked over to him. During the time that transpires, Title also lets him know, hey, um, you know, this probably isn't going to close today. We've got this particular issue that we're sorting. It's going to be a little bit of a delay. Um, so I sent the gentleman an email that just kind of said, hey, here's here's the issue we're having. Here's the hang up. Um, you know, don't worry, your money's at title. I don't even have it. They've confirmed it. Um, you know, even if this takes a couple of days to get sorted per our you know note and agreement, like you're still going to earn interest on those days. Um, he wasn't interested in that. He was freaked out and just said, hey, send me my money back. Um, so we reached out to title and we were like, hey, you know, <laughs> will you wire the, the gentleman's money back to him? You know, clearly this isn't a good fit, right? So I then reached out and was like, hey, you know, sorry that this particular one didn't go well. Like, unfortunately, stuff comes up with closings sometimes, which like, you know, if you've done several deals, I'm sure you're aware of. Um, you know, we can't control all variables. We do our best. However, they've reversed your money to you. They've got it. Furthermore, because we've had your money Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today's Monday, I'm also um, interested in paying you the interest rate you would have gotten for those four days just for the inconvenience. Kind of like a, hey, let's part ways as friends, right? He comes back and says, your title company isn't even real. They have three brick and mortar locations and are one of the largest ones in Indianapolis and says he's documented all the information and the FBI will be in touch. Whew. So what could we have done differently? It would have been great if Title would have let the guy know like, hey, we've got your money. As soon as we found out that he wanted that and they hadn't sent it, like we were on the phone making sure that he got it. Um, and then even with the issue with closing getting delayed potentially a couple days, like we let him know the minute we were told by Title on Monday, hey, we don't think we can get this cleared. My experience with title companies when they have issues like this come up, they tend to try like everything they can up to the 11th hour to get it done before they push back because they don't want to have to reschedule. Um, so what actually ended up happening? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I'm envisioning the face of like the person at the FBI that he reached out to. He's like, yeah, this real estate influencer like took my money. I sent it to a licensed title company. I got cold feet. They gave me my money back plus interest. Like, bro, what more do you want? Right? Um, so kind of like, what's, what's the lesson here? First off, over communicate with your lenders. Um, we try to do that on every deal. Sometimes we fall short. We don't give enough updates or that kind of thing. But I try to give like updates throughout the process, update when we're listed. Here's the before and after pictures for them, right? Try to make them feel like they're part of the process. And then definitely communicate any issues like this that come up, um, you know, hey, seller has an issue. It's going to be a couple days, right? It wasn't like we were just like, oh, yeah, things are happening. It'll be a couple more. Like, no, we were like, here's the issue. Here's the problem. Here's when we expect it resolved. By the way, you're still making money while your money sits at title, even though like I don't have the house yet. Right. Um, so all in all, I think this was kind of a case of like not a good fit mixed with somebody who was potentially newer to private lending. Um, fortunately, like we typically keep enough cash on hand to be able to self fund a couple deals if need be. Or in like the instance of this deal, I think it was Monday that it was supposed to close. And it was like Wednesday that they got the issue sorted out. And we actually ended up pushing back about a week. Um, we put a different private lender on this deal who has since got his money plus the return. And we've now sold the house and flipped it. So, you know, the end of the day, did we turn out right? Yeah, absolutely. A um, couple things to note, though, just with private money lenders, like we typically do a one to two year note. Um, it's kind of like you're linked to this person, right? Um, I remember right when COVID hit, we had a big flip that I had a lender on and he had taken like a loan against his stock portfolio to um, fund that deal for us. And uh, he was like, bro, I need my money back. And I was like, I feel you. I'm going to do everything I can to make that happen in a timely manner 
but like, you know, we do have a note and mortgage, right? Ended up being fine. He got his money back. We sold the flip, made money, like win-win for everybody. But I think a lot of people don't realize, like, if you're not really jiving with somebody where you're like, hey, I'm cool doing business with you for like a year, um, you might want to just kind of proceed with caution. On this particular deal, in hindsight, with kind of how sketchy um, the relationship was, I mean, I'm getting, you know, five, six, seven emails in the very short span of time. I'm actually really thankful that he was like, hey, I just want out. I would have rathered that than like me sold him on staying in the deal uh, because on this particular deal, we had two other issues. We went under contract once with a buyer. Sweet, we got a payoff from our new lender. Hey, we're closing here. They got an appraisal done and it came in just like stupidly low. We were like, this doesn't make sense. Their realtor was like, this doesn't make sense. We asked for a second appraisal, offered to pay for it. And the buyer was like, no, I want it for this new price. And it was like, I want to say it came in at like 150K and we sold the place for over 200. We were like, no, it's just a bad appraisal, right? So we ended up going back on market. I don't think that would have been a fun conversation with this particular gentleman. Um, the second time we were under contract with a buyer that was using a FHA mortgage and they decided at the 11th hour that they wanted to switch to a conventional mortgage. That added like another two, three weeks to, we told the lender, hey, we've got a new buyer, we're closing here. Then we had to request like a third updated payoff on that one. Fortunately for us, like this particular lender knows the game, he knows how it works and realizes like, hey, some things are just out of our control. At the end of the day, he got a great return on his money and we had a pretty solid flip that went to a new family and we netted like 20,000 bucks. Can't be upset about that at all, but I'd be lying if I said that this one wasn't uh, a little dramatic. Um, I'll be blunt, this one didn't really stress me out that much. Um, in fact, you know, if the gentleman we had this issue with like still follows me, I don't think I'm saying anything here that would upset him. If anything, he should be happy of like, he was never gonna get scammed. The deal he funded, somebody else funded, they've since been paid back plus interest. Um, I will note he wouldn't take the interest that I offered him, said he didn't quote, want anything else to do with me. Um, however, like I didn't lose any sleep over this. Kind of had that talk I had with you guys of like, if I work at the FBI and I get this phone call, you know, hey, a real estate investor, borrowed my money, I wanted it back, and they gave it to me and offered interest back. And I got my money back. I'm like, I'm not even wasting my time on that, right? Like I've got kidnappers and serial killers I'm hunting. Um, so I didn't lose any sleep over it. That being said, I think maybe in a different phase of my career, like I might have really stressed out about it. Uh, one of my favorite quotes, I think it's Thomas Jefferson, is over the course of my life, I suffered often and most of it never happened. So don't let stuff like this psych you out. Realize anytime you're dealing with people and you're dealing with the potential to make profits, things can get a little messy. Um, it's important that you're respectful, you're polite, and you keep kind of an even keeled head. And like I did on this video, consult with your attorney before you uh, do anything. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch today's video. My name is Ryan Dossie. Hopefully you enjoyed kind of this in-depth look at a deal that kind of went sideways had a couple hiccups, but we still ended up getting paid on it. Appreciate you guys. I'll talk to you next time.